what's going on everybody? Happy Sunday. It's your man Zion Rosier. Welcome to another episode of Art Talks. Hi, what's going on, man? What's going on? My name is Zion Rosier. What's your name? Um, Anthony Haas Jr. Hey, what's going on? How you doing today, man? I'm good, man. Chilling. For sure, man. Where you from? Um, I'm from Miami. Hey, okay, same here. Yep, I, local. Yeah, we local. I, you know, yep. got to share support. I'm glad yep. to be speaking with you. And I know you brought a couple of your artwork, and I would yep. like you to showcase and explain what your art process. I really enjoy your art skills. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, I'm going to start off with this one. Um, okay. This one right here. Like, I started this, like, I say in February, I think. Yeah. And basically, like, I saw this dope picture, like, on Instagram, because, like, I'd be scrolling up, like, Instagram trying to find, like, you know, reference photos and all that stuff. Correct. Like, you know, I just got the drawing, you know. And then in the background, I did, like, a abstract type of, uh, you know, background. Because, like, I, I don't go based off of that. You know, I just go drawing and then just keep on going. Definitely. Uh, I really enjoy in the fact that you use graphite and you was able to create a texture. Yeah. And you make it into like 3D. And it's very tricky to achieve that without the use of colors, but just the color gray values, you know, the gray, the whites, the dark gray, the blacks. And that's very impressive. And I really enjoy the texture of the hair the most. That's what was eye catching to me as well. Appreciate it. I'm not going to lie, the hair, that was okay. kind of hard. The hair was kind of hard. Like, it's <laughs> not easy doing hair. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> Tell me about it. That's live, man. That's yeah. so. Appreciate and what it. was the easiest part on that particular portrait? Um, Really just like, okay, the easiest part was like the shading, like, you know, um, the value of, the value of like his skin and all that. Because it's like, that's like the easiest part, like. And the, I'm not gonna lie, the beard was a little easier too, cause it's like, um, I don't know, like the, the beard had like more definition in it rather than the hair. So it was just like. Correct. But, and also the like the glasses too. Truly, the shade is on point. I I admire that, man. Thanks. Welcome. Hey, everybody that's tuning in. If you guys have any art-related questions for either one of us, please feel free to drop it in the comment section below. Me and Anthony will be able to answer them. So please feel free to ask us any art questions. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, man, that's live, man. Appreciate and it. what school did you graduate from? Oh, I'm gra I graduated from um, Michael Crop. I was in the magnet program and also i have a friend that's in my lot that's in the live right now kayla Luray. she was Luray. also a part of um the magnet art program also uh valeria lanes eleni castillo and annalise i don't know her last name right now but mm -hmm. like all of them they were all like in the art program with me and like they doing like they was doing a thing very talented um, uh -huh. There's a lot. There's a lot of talent that came out of Michael Crop. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of talent. Hey, tell me about it, man. That is so live. Shout out to Kayla. Shout out to everybody. Yeah. And um, what's so cool about it too that you graduated from Dr. Michael Crop? I'm not sure if you knew, but um, I graduated from Robert Morgan, and it's on the South End, like near Kendall. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. for my ninth and tenth grade year, I went out to Dr. Michael Crop, and I was also in the Art Magnet program. Um, I'm not sure if you had the uh, art teacher, but the art teacher that I had, um, I believe the year 2014 through 2016, mm -hmm. um, I had Mr. Montez. Yeah. I yeah. Had too. <laughs> I had he, he's the one who, like, he, he literally evolved everything. Because, like, even in middle school, I was in the magnet program and I transitioned over. Mm -hmm. But, like, he, he just, you know, evolved everything. He played a big role. Like, I'm telling you, Mr. Yeah. Montez, he was everything. For the show, and what school did he transfer for, uh, transfer to? Uh, he went to Dash. Went to Dash, yeah, Dash. Yeah. You already know, yeah. Everybody went to Dash. I'm like, yeah, man, I feel the same way. Um, I remember it being a kid. I also been in magnet school since elementary school. So my parents always enrolled me. I went to Rock uh, Rainbow Park Elementary. Mm -hmm. Um, from the middle school, I went to Dave. I'm at um, Norm Dave Middle School. Mm -hmm. 
the Thunderbirds. And then after that, I went to Dr. Michael Cobb Senior High for my freshman and sophomore year. And right. then it was very critical. Um, I admire and got to give all the credit due to Mr. Montez. He evolved yeah. everybody. And just the fact that he was able to break it down and not only break it down, but to inspire the, the next generation and just all of the lessons still on the back of my head to this day. Very nice guy. That's so cool. Definitely. So I had, definitely, so I had to bring that up because I know that you know a couple of my friends. Um, I have a person named Jay. Mm-hmm. And um, he's a tattoo artist. He also graduated from Dr. Michael Yeah, yeah. yeah man. He's getting alive right now. And hey, you're alive right now. Hey, what's going on? Cause, hey, keep up the great work, man. Uh, I'm not sure if you also know Alex Rodriguez. Do you know him? Alex. That name Alex. sounds familiar. I got to I gotta see your face. I'm good with faces, not names. <laughs> got to go with faces, not names? Okay, okay. One, one second, one second. Hey, I got, I got you right now. Let's see, let's see. We'll, 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 I'll pull up a photo of him, and you'll let me know if you recognize him. Okay. Oh, I got you, I got you, got you. Yeah, man. Um, Do you take any photography class out there with Miss Moon Steel? Yeah, I did. Def- yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that was, that was literally my first experience when it comes to, like, real photography, like, you know, developing photos, like, doing a whole, like, photography process with, like, a regular film camera. That was, like, it was everything. Oh, dang. She went down uh, Miss Fonsi went to Dash, too. Yeah, she went to Dash, too. She transferred, like, early, <laughs> 2020 was her last year with us. And then, you know, she went to Dash also. Wow. I, okay, okay, okay. Let's see, let's see. I'm trying to see, like, a good photo of Alex. Uh, Alex. I know you got, a, you got plenty of photos. <laughs> hmm. This right here, if you weren't a mask, but you probably might recognize him. Where I'm merch. <laughs> Do you recognize him? A little bit, a little bit, kind of. A little bit, a little bit. Okay, I gotta cool. See, you know, I gotta see a full face, but a little well, bit. Truly, but I just wanted to bring him up as well. Another mm-hmm. nice artist from Dr. Michael Crock, Senior High. And just that whole environment. Um, how was your um, experience out there? Um, I will say the first year, ninth grade year, it was kind of tough, like, because really I wanted to go to New World, but, you know, I didn't get in, and I tried again, didn't get in, but really I feel like crop was like, I was, it was, it was destined for me to be there, it was meant for me to be there, like, and of course I met a lot of good people, amazing people, like, like, built really good relationships, like, got a whole art family and everything, like. Mm-hmm. So it was good, like, but like through, as as throughout time, you know, it got better, and it's just like we all progressed as artists, basically. And like, it was sad to see Montez go. It was really sad, but you know, he got to do his thing. Truly, and he got to stay in contact with him all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he left. You mentioned the year. What year did he leave once again? Um, I think it was twenty eighteen. It was 2018, like 2018. Okay. Yeah, so like my sophomore year, that was the last year he was there. Got it. Wow, man. Blessings. Yeah, man. Truly, that's what's up, man. I'm glad to hear. And what are you currently doing right now? Are you in college pursuing art, or what are you um, doing now? Currently, I'm in college. I am in college. I'm, well, I go to Miami Dade, but I am working. On like, I have an interest in fashion also, along with art. Art is my passion, but I just wanted to, you know, get. More, I want to like develop my um my interest more because like I don't know nothing about fashion. I know art over fashion, so correct. Yeah, but basically, I just want to um pursue that right now. But I'm definitely gonna keep going with art. That's never gonna stop. Yes, sir. Like, my my major is on um, fashion merchandising right now, so I'm learning the business behind fashion and everything. Wow, man. And hold that thought. We're going to get straight into that. And I would love you to inform our audience about the business side of the fashion. Mm-hmm. When you mention fashion, I would like you to also showcase the shoes that you design. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you got them? Yeah, I got them right here. Um, I'm going to start cool. off with the, these aren't the first one, but like this one is based off of a drawing that I did. I, I believe 2017, 2016, I believe. Okay. 
this was the original drawing. Like I had did like, I don't know. I just wanted to go with like a spray paint type of vibe. And then like, you know, just add like the, like little abstract design and everything. Correct. And, like, the colors on the real shoe is completely different. Cause I was like, you know what? Let me do something different to it. You know, even though the drawing, but eventually I will, you know, make it the scale, but yeah, this is the shoe right now. Yes. Jeez. That's hard, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Like, it took me, I think, a couple of weeks. Not too long, though. Definitely, man. And the fact that you did on the classic Air Force Ones, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. And how was the process, man? Did you tape it up? Like, were you afraid of messing up? I, I know it was all white, man. How yeah, was the process? Um, Okay, so here's what I did. I did tape them up. I taped them up at the sole of the shoe. And then, like, um, basically, I taped them up right here, you know, so I could just leave this alone. And then, basically, I went to painting this part. Really, I started drawing it out first. Like, I drew out the, like, flame type of thing or, like, the spray paint. Then I drew the hand, and I drew out this little abstract design on the um, the check. Correct. And basically, like, I went, I don't know, I think I did, like, five, six, seven coats, I think. And it wasn't hard. What was really hard was, like, this part. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was this part that was hard, and I was getting the colors a little off. I'm not going to lie, but, like, basically, it wasn't a very hard process. Now, this part, it was, it was, it was smooth. It was easy. And then, like, what I had did to get, like, the white, you know, little spots and stuff, Correct. I, like I wet it, I, I I got some white paint, then I put it in water, and then like I like hit the brush to like give it like a drip effect on it. Wow. Yeah, say like little splash. Yeah. Wait, one fingertip. That's very impressive, man. And the uh, medium that you use, is it waterproof and is it acrylic? Oh, it's um, I use. Uh, paint or uh, leather acrylic paint from Angels Direct. Great. I got like their whole, like I got the whole um, what's it called? Like the starter package, I think the starter kit, and like I had it came with a shoe cleaner. I had to clean the shoes off first, and then um, then you know you deglaze it, like you take off the factory paint, and then like um, then you start the process, and then afterwards. I put like a finisher on it to like hold it together so mm -hmm. it like won't chip off, it won't like um wash off or anything. So like the finisher is what really, you know, holds it together. Wow. And tell me this, the finisher, is it like a glossy? Is it similar yeah. to like varnish? It's yeah, it's a glossy finish. Like I, I don't know. I just feel like when I use the glossy uh finisher, it just I don't know. It gives it some more life. Like it just gives it like a nice little shine, a nice little pop to it. You know. Hey, I see. With the light source. Right, right. Yeah, cause it's like I like the little shine to it. Cause they do have like a duller to like get rid of that um, you know, shininess. But I just like it, so I keep it. I enjoy it too, man. And do you? Thank you for showcasing that with us. Do you have the other pair of shoes that you like to showcase as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, now these I did right before you know the whole situation we're going through now. Um, well, I actually during during it during it because you know we 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 got ejected from school early, so this was supposed to be for grab bash. But basically, um, I started. I I wanted to do something different. I didn't really plan this out, but I did in a way. Like I'll show you the drawing. Yes. That I started first, but. Basically, I wanted to do like a city type of thing, like little buildings and stuff. And I just wanted it to be gold because, like, I've never worn gold shoes before. So I was like, why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and basically, I did this like little um, abstract design. And, like, I always like putting like sometimes a crown on there because you know J. Cole, right? Yes, I'm familiar yeah. with J. Cole. Yeah. Like, I always like doing that um, little crown because it's like, it, it's like, it's something about it that I like. I don't know. Mm hmm. And then, like, what I had did was I taped, you know, the um the gold part off so I can, like, and I put, like, paper towel around there so it can, like, separate everything. And, like, I did the little splash on there also. Yeah, see? 
I covered this part that a little gold splashes on the uh, sole right here. And uh, oh, and also on the other side, I did like a little palm trees, you know, kind of like signified Miami a little bit. A little bit. Right, so got to represent. Yep. Yep. Yeah, same thing over here. But, um, Ooh, that was clean, man. Appreciate it. Let me see if I can find this drawing real quick. Um, All right, sure. Take your time. Yes, sir. And what's so cool about fashion, and and I feel the same way, the fact that we're able to develop and create an art where not only two-dimensional, but we're able to transfer to 3D art as well. Definitely. And just use those basic foundations and... Use that as a yeah. Use that as a foundation to venture out. That's the whole point of experimenting. So when I hear you saying I wanted to go and paint the shoes a gold color, you were like, "Why not? You don't have nothing to lose." And I, I love that so much. I feel the same way, man. You got to experiment as an artist. That's the way that we grow and just share knowledge, man. Definitely. But um, here's the drawing that I started. Like I did like little sketches for like ideas, basically. Um. This was like what the shoe was supposed to be, but then like I went around and changed it. Like I might use this for something else one day. Like I did like different like little people to like in different angles and stuff because I was gonna try to put that on the shoe. But I want correct. I want doing a you know going a different direction and then. But I'm definitely might use this um design for something else like another project. But mm -hmm. um yeah like this was like the original, but you know. Respect, man. Do you do any digital work? I believe you will really be able to take full advantage of your designs. Um, I want to. I really, really want to go into the digital like side of art. Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to invest in getting like an iPad so I could like really get into it. So soon, soon I'm gonna get me a little iPad. You know, Apple yes, sir. and like. I'm, I'm gonna go crazy with it. I just gotta, you know, take my time and practice with it because I know, I know that um, digital art is very different. Like, because you don't have that much control over it. Right? Well, mm, am I wrong? No. Yeah, you're wrong, man. You're oh. wrong. I, I got to. You're, you're you're wrong on that. The way how I look at digital work, everything that we were taught and we practice and develop the technique, right? This is the way how I look at it. I believe you have so much more control. Um, different mediums, of course, but let's just say, for example, okay, I could pay digital art to acrylic painting on a canvas using acrylic. Let's just say, for example, you paint in layers and you build colors on top of each other, like the artwork behind me. Like, I would right. say for sure, like the main advantage of the one, I make drawings of a lot of my siblings a lot, but the one of my little brother doing this. <laughs> Let's just say, for example, the difference between digital and this. Uh, I'll say when I uh, when I approach digital work, I approach it as if it's a actual art product that I can actually touch, but I can't touch. It's just like Wi-Fi. You knowing you knowing that it's there, but you can eventually print it out, right? Right. So the way how I look at it, let's just say, for example, I started this background. I just painted the whole artwork like it's navy blue. Right. to give me like this um, natural tone and eventually when i draw it draw it out with a color and pencil or charcoal or whatever i use for this and i apply a color on it you know just building layers on top of each other right. so keep that in mind so when you're on procreate which is an app on the ipad which is really cool really cool app okay. so you look at it like I'm pretty tech savvy as well, so I was able to adapt really well and very right. instantly. But just the fact that you're able to build layers on layers and it give you the option on Procreate. And here's the advantage of digital art compared to the traditional. Let's just say, or clearly you can paint on like the cloth or the fabric of my little brother. He wearing like this turquoise color that I wanted to paint. Yeah. But for digital art, if I pick a particular layer. I could pick a different color and I could change it red literally in one swipe. So what it make me allow and what you allow me to do, and I mentioned it'll be a great idea for your shoes, because it'll allow, allow you to take a look at the same design, but in different color variations 
with little to nothing time compared to drawing it by hand. Because, you know, art is a time consuming process, but it's worth it in the long run, right, right, right? So I say I had to disagree on the digital. I look at it as it's easier. The only tricky thing that is hard for me mm-hmm. as an artist when it comes to digital, which I got on my own iPad, I got this like paper-like texture for my screen protector. So it's always, it seems like I'm actually drawing on the actual paper, which I'm really not. So I'm drawing a digital um, tablet, but I had to get one of those so I could like trick my brain into as if I'm working on a traditional um, regular drawing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I highly recommend whenever that time comes, man, you're going to have a good time. And if you learn anything interesting about the app, we're going to keep informing informing each other. I still got people to this day, a mother artist. Um, I have another person that I graduated from, Robert Morgan. His name is Johnny Cohen. Are you mm-hmm. familiar with him? Oh, no, I don't know that person. Oh, you don't know that person? No, no worry, no worry. But basically, he worked on digital work. He made, like, animation. That, like, that's his whole thing. Um, but he's a really f- a huge fan of digital work, and he was able to inform me about these small communities that work with digital work and just shortcuts and ways that I didn't know before. So it's always, like, a learning process. Right. You definitely got to, like, you know, do your research and like keep yourself informed truly man and we got technology too man so mm-hmm. it, it's out there like if you want to draw a particular shape or a portrait out there especially on procreate yeah. just search it up on google and then you get to learn from there and youtube is literally my <laughs> that's literally my go-to for everything i need to, like, <laughs> like youtube is the plug what? Well, what's, well, what's your latest um search on YouTube? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> I've been searching up so much stuff. I really don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure at the moment. <laughs> I got y'all gone with that question, man. No recommendations. Well, you, you asked about me. Yeah. What about you? What's your latest? Uh, I bet. I, I gotta look through my um. Look at my phone real quick. Hold up. I got you. I got you. Hold up. Hold up. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's all types of things, matter of fact. Dang, bro. I'm kind of like, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I'm, I had to go straight through my history. But one art related um, search that I made was monotype printmaking because I'm really interested in monotype. Once again, I took it at my school that I graduated from, Robert Morgan. But um, my teacher, um, before she left, her name um, was Miss Sharp, and she introduced us to monotype. So she was able to give us like a plexiglass and all of these other materials. So I decided to take a look at what's the requirement that I need so I can make it at home. So that's what I wanted to find out. I'm interested in developing a new series dedicated to monotype. Um, I would also like to explore with 3D, which is ceramics. I want to get back into ceramics. I took it out there at Crop as well for my freshman sophomore year. Truly, man. And so, um, Kayla, Kayla. Oh, yeah, we should. Hey, yeah. <laughs> we got to talk about that. Hey, for sure, for sure, for sure, man. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> hey, yeah. Let me see, let me see. What is we got somebody. Yeah, somebody said artist fire emoji. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, Finny, Gilbert right there. Oh, for real? Oh, we got everybody yeah. popping up. How you doing yeah. today? Yeah, hey, gotta gotta give him a shout out. <laughs> if anybody have any art related questions, please feel free to drop in the comment section. Once again, we're here to give advice about what we know and the art field, and we want to inform you guys. So if you guys. Definitely, yeah, yeah. So if you guys have anything that you would like to say or give us a compliment, feel free by all means, feel free. Yeah, Mel. Um, what you mentioned earlier about the fashion business side, I would like to know what do you learn so far about it? Um, what I learned so far about it is basically I learned about like when it comes to fashion, you gotta have like, if say you're trying to like have your own line and everything, like your own clothing line. Correct. You definitely have to know who is your your customer? You have to learn your customer. You have to, you know, find out the demographics, their um, psychographics, like 
you may not think these things are important, but they're very important. Like, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go into like, oh, where did this person, did they go to college? What's their education, their income? Mm-hmm. Um, what else, like, if they're married or not? Like, th- all these things play a factor in like, who are you going to like sell to? Like, for example, um, say I'm trying to sell a streetwear brand to somebody, right? Correct. You gotta, like, you gotta think about who buys streetwear? Like, what's the age range? I would say the age range, depending on the type you sell, probably I just throw something out there like eighteen to twenty five or so, right? Right. Like, um, you got to think about like what do they, like what's their style? Also, you got to think about like you got to think about all these things because it's like it all factors into will this person buy my product? You know, truly. Sure. Like, it's 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 a lot that goes into it. Um. And also, one thing I did learn, I finally learned how to use Photoshop and Illustrator and like a few other, um, like one other, like Adobe um, thing. And okay, basically, like I like we created our own store. Like, last semester, we created like our own store. Like we did like different projects and stuff. So like we, we created like our own store, like a mood board. Um, a mood board is basically like a. It's like different images to like depict, like give like a teaser of like say what's your next line gonna be like what what what's next for the next collection you know, and basically we made a mood board and we you gotta have like a line sheet which is like, um basically like everything that like your whole lineup of clothing and everything, and also we did like a little digital store like the edits, it took it took a minute but you know got through it. Mm-hmm. And, Am I leaving something out? I might be leaving something out at the moment, but um Okay. We'll we'll come back to that. Yeah. But like basically like I've learned a lot. Like it, it opened my like just taking the this um specific route basically it opened my eyes to a lot about fashion that I didn't even know about. Like I never knew what a mood board was. <laughs> Truly, man, and now that you informed me about that, when you mentioned a mood board, it sounds like similar to like an art portfolio. It's just like a, a general idea of what's your theme yeah of the product that you're trying to sell yeah that's exactly what it is yeah Uh uh-huh and now that we're speaking about this too it was just so cool um i'm interested in the fashion design um i'm pretty sure you're aware of my clothing line which i made multiple drawings of different variations of art of my series at a time it go from what i'm wearing now my model type you know you gotta gotta represent appreciate it you guys got to cop one of these on my website at zionrosier.com, you know, hey, link in the bio. <laughs> that's true. Definitely. You know, I got to throw that promo in. <laughs> hey, you got you to promote. You got to promote, man. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always. Um, with that being said, too, I've also been interested in uh, finding my direct audience because when you be so broad, it works. But yeah. if you could focus on marketing to yeah. a specific audience, specific, like very specific, what you mentioned, and what, I'm glad that you mentioned this too, because I had searched some videos up just to get like a general idea to go further in. Yeah. And, and people are willing to give out this information too. But yeah, you mentioned how much they make, um, the education, that they yeah. marry or not. I will take that to consideration. Um, yeah. Well, I looked at it in the beginning, because I was like, Oh, like my audience is like kids, of course, because they're immersion artists and they yeah. want to follow a footprint and similar to mine and just develop their own brand and be an yeah. entrepreneur, just like myself and myself and you. Um, so with that being said, I was actually like writing down because I was like, I don't want to, a part of me was like, I didn't want to cut it off like to a specific mm-hmm. age limit i'm like what if a potential customer that's a kid but i know my audience my, my audience for sure is a bunch of kids due to my color scheme and just my yeah. bright fun energy so i gotta incorporate them but a part of me was like i didn't want to leave anybody left out but in reality to grow as an entrepreneur these are the routes that you got to attack so you could spend all your marketing efforts into that particular audience. So I'm glad you mentioned that, man. Definitely. And like, oh, go ahead. 
you mentioned like um your your specific audience is kids you gotta think in you gotta um how you say um you gotta think and put in consideration that um who's gonna be buying because like wh like what's your age range basically because you gotta think about like some kids they may not have money their parents are buying the clothing correct like you gotta think about that too definitely and i'm glad you mentioned that so with that being said let's just say for example like these are like five, six years old, but their parents are like 25 to like 35 or even like 55. I'm just saying like my audience is like, it's like now that I'm thinking about it and I, I keep a list of like a Google SL sheet of yeah. who's buying it, but I don't include like their age, which I, I definitely got to start incorporating that. Yeah. Today. I, I got you. That's what I'm lacking on the SL, but I could just search it up and hopefully on social media, they got the age on there, but um, I got to ask them in person so I can keep up to date because that's something that's tricky. So with that being said, let's say, for example, the kid is five years old and the parents are like 26. When I put it in my Google Excel sheet, which information should I incorporate so I can make sure that that's my target audience? Um, I would say, I would, okay, I would say basically, okay, your specific line is very kid friendly. So it's all, I don't really think like the parents' age matter because it's like, it's all about will the, will the um, parent like see potential in buying it? Cause it's like, you don't want to just buy something just for the sake of buying it. Like it has to really, I don't, I'm not sure if the, like the parents' age matters, but definitely the kids' age matters because like, they're not the ones who are technically buying it. They may be like, oh mom, dad, I want this. This looks really dope. This looks really cool. Like I want it. And you know, you got, you just got to think about like, is it kid friendly? Because I remember um, we did a project, um, I think last semester also, and my professor showed us present, showed us examples of somebody else's project, and it had like, it was meant for kids, but it kind of had like, a, like curse, like a curse word in it or so, and it's like you got to take that into consideration. Like, will a parent want to buy that for their kid, even though it's meant for kids, because it has like foul language in it, like would a parent buy that you know so oh, right? i don't believe like the parent like maybe it does i'm not too sure but i know that the kid definitely the kids um ages definitely matter because you know you got to see like what's the cutoff you know like yeah, what the cut off? like if if say you may have teenagers even buying it like say like, truly instead, yeah. instead of just little kids you may have teenagers buying it like up to like maybe 16 17 maybe even 18 you never know and then, correct like, you gotta think about the lowest age like is the cutoff for lowest age like six or five like you gotta think about that truly and with that being said too man like some of these kids are like bigger for yeah. what the age is too yeah so <laughs> so that that's something to consider as well that's really interesting i'm glad you mentioned that and like now now i'm speaking about this as well and you mentioned like the teenagers of course i got those as well and even yeah. uh, adults are supporting our passion and my passion as well which i'm very grateful but i just gotta like go back into it and i'm glad you mentioned that so that's something i will consider after this talk and thank you that that's something i really needed to hear because I, I i've been doing a lot of research about it man that's so live um, with that being said, we got a couple of questions, and I know people are throwing hearts on the bottom. Yeah, right corner. Sure. yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's go. Thank you, guys. So we're gonna get started with the question. We're gonna go with Destiny. Go ahead. You can read it out to the audience. Okay. Um, what is your next drawing going to be? Um, well, currently I did a China and McLean drawing. Um, I might exp you know what China McLean is, right? Correct the Disney star yeah. that was on Ant Form, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um recently I posted this. I might expand on it a little bit more. Hold up. Okay. Yeah. This is it. And also, um I <laughs> I'm starting to like get into posting art on TikTok and stuff. So like I'm really trying to like build a little bit of a platform on there with my art. Uh huh. Like the same drawing I did before with the do with the um the fade, correct. Um, I did the same thing in the background, like except a little bit more. Like I think the other one was a little bit more structured in a way, even though it was loose and free. Um, 
Hey, thanks, Kayla. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit more loose and free rather than like, you know, a little bit more structured because like, I was just I was just going crazy with it. But this might be like a big project I do, maybe like with some paint and everything or most likely definitely not. I know for a fact I want to um, I want to do the the do with the fade and like color and maybe maybe and watercolor or acrylic. I'm not sure. I, I got to think about that. Definitely, man. Take your time with it, man. I'm looking forward to that new series, man. And I can see like a relationship, just the fact that you're like more of a portraiture type of dude, and I really admire that, man. Yeah. And just the fact that you're able to incorporate it. So if you continue experimenting, man. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely, man. So with that being said, uh, let's see. So I got to read a question. next project? Well, what's my, ne my next project? Yeah. All right, cool. My next project, to be honest, um, I recently uh, um, started taking commission piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on a coloring pencil, probably like an 18 by 24. Uh, one of my client's daughter um, with her newborn. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hook those two together. So I'm looking forward to that project. Dope. And it's very rare that I take on commissions, but I was like, I got a list. So whenever I have time, I'm due to being in school. So I'm like, okay, I'm available so I can get started. So that's what I'm currently working on. And I'm looking forward to bringing this to life, like always, but just able to, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. I don't usually do commission piece, but every now and then when I want to, I like to create art for myself yeah you know i feel you oh somebody i have a question it just happened to pop up <laughs> um from dom d-o-m-k 2k she asked i'm not sure if it, I don't look. See it. you don't see it okay I, i'll read it for you she said how to contact you for a painting very talented uh well you could just dm me on my art page um also, I think I got to put my email up on my art page, but you could definitely just DM me. Um, I, I answer all the time. So, you know, just DM me if you want to paint in, whatever. Yes, yeah, hey. But hey, that, hey, go ahead and get at him. And then, of course, me. If hey, you're definitely him. You, you got to reach out to him. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, same thing what he said. You could also message me or you could easily go and click the link in the bio and you can sign up a contact form, which I will be speaking to you about so you can go ahead and develop that. Yeah. Have you um, created like a professional page while you was out in Dr. Michael Kropp? Did Mr. Montez help you out with that? Um, no, he, he, he never really got into uh, like creating like anything like social media wise. Like I basically just did it on my own. Like, cause usually I'll just post it on my, um, my main page, which is chillvibes.ant. And basically, I'll just post, like, my art on there. But then I was like, you know what? Let me make an art page, you know? Right. Rather right. than... Some, every now and then, I may post on my, my, my main page, like, something that I really, really, really like. Like, just to promote it both ways. Right. Because I, I have a bigger following on my main page because I had it longer. So, well, I'm trying to, you know, build up my um, art page. But basically, um, every most of my art is literally on my um, my art page, so... Truly. Hey, go ahead. Everybody that's in here, if you haven't followed him, please follow Ant. Really great guy. Definitely. My pleasure, man. And uh, follow Zion too, man. Come on. Man. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing an artist like everything. Come on. Thank you. I really appreciate it, man. It means a lot from artist to artist, man. Definitely, man. No problem. Check this out. We got like, we got a couple of questions. I, I, I got, we gonna get to it. Um, you gotta give a huge shout out to Kayla. Kayla, she hey, she, Kayla. she she did her thing like she. <laughs> so we got a question from Kayla. She asked, "Will you keep your abstract design and put them into your clothing design?" I think that's for you. That's for you. Uh, it, it could be for for both of us. Okay. Um. Yeah, abstract design and put them into clothing design. Okay, I'll okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm planning on going with my abstract design and I would like to put them on a new series of clothing. Um, to be specific, um my latest merchandise, which is called Bromelius. I'm not sure if you've seen it. I'll give you guys a tour. Hold on one second. Let me um go get it real quick. 
One second. All right, got you guys. One second. Okay. So my bromelius, this is done with silk screen. So it's like a cool process. Oh, yeah. And I will cause Yeah, see. So it's a drawing of plants, right? Basically. But what's so cool about it, since I took printmaking and I was learning my techniques, I was able to learn about lines, the weight of how deep I carved into my linoleum board. So I was just playing with those textures and this is my final product. So with that being said, I'm currently working on a new series dedicated to this as well, just to continue with the abstract design. Um, not only, or you guys, if you guys are interested, it's available on my website at zionrosia.com. You know, I'll also do the sewing as well. I got people to help me out to sew this in. You know, you got to pay attention to the details. All that matter. Man, y'all go buy, y'all go support. <laughs> Support on my website, um, zionrosier.com. <laughs> so with that being said, thank you guys. Y'all going crazy. <laughs> um, yes, so I'm planning on incorporating more abstract design. Just taking one step at a time. There's no, no rush. I want to make sure that when I release products like this, I release it the right way. But just always that continuation of learning new things. So I want to incorporate different things like that into my further of my latest clothing design. Thank you for that amazing question. What about you, Ant? Um, I do want to like have my own clothing line. Also like put my, I thought about it. It's just like, I don't really know where to start, you know? Like I'm trying to do my, my own research and stuff, but like, I have a question for you. Like, how did you start your line? Like, how did you start it? Okay, cool. All right. To be honest, when I first started my clothing line, I believe it was the year 2018. Um, my parents, I'll say 2016, but I'll say 2018. That's when I really was able to be informative and I had to go through a lot of process, but it worked in the long run. I'll say for sure my parents got, um, they asked for a professional digital picture of my artwork. And then for my birthday, they gave me my first jacket, which was my artwork. Uh, with my my at sign of well, my mm -hmm. Facebook, YouTube, and I'm trying to think. I got Facebook on there, YouTube on there, on Instagram. Like Instagram logo with my my at sign on the yeah. front of the hoodie. On the back of the hoodie, I have another artwork. And to be exact, the one of my little brother Pram by the stairs is on the yeah. front of the hoodie, and I still got it to this day. I'm gonna put that in the frame. But um, back to what I was saying, I have another artwork on the back of my hoodie. And when I got at the mall and I found out the price, they mentioned like $50 mm -hmm. and it was pretty pricey. I was like, how can I make reproduction? Cause if I'm going to sell it for like X amount, probably like 60, that's like a $10 um, amount. Yeah. So just going through different research, finding a, a good vendor or somebody to have a warehouse that work on t-shirts that's tr uh, really trustable. Yeah. Um, somebody that know what they're doing and see if they could make your product the best quality possible. So yeah. I have family members that I actually get my jackets from and they own a warehouse and thank God they have um, a silk screen press and they have basically everything there. So they were able to not only inform me of like their practices and teach me how to make jackets of my own, but give me like different ideas as you go. So when it come to, I'm not sure the question for how to produce clothing with your existing artwork, I'll say for sure, go to the best vendors and try to find what worked for you. You just got, you can't be afraid. Uh, I, I gotta understand too, that as a young entrepreneur, money is like hard to come by, yeah. but no matter what, I always keep the saying, if you, if there's a will, there's a way. Even if you spend like X amount of money, you're going to make it the best version as possible and you grow as you learn as well. And just, I'm glad you asked that question. So my idea for starting a clothing line, start very small, don't go all out. Um, because when I first started, and it was a learning process too, and I'm glad to go through it. I specifically, like I had a color scheme, which were the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. They're very bright, 
fun, colorful colors. And I love the fact that it's primary colors. Can't yeah. go wrong with them. You can mix, make different colors. But when it comes to clothing, it became tricky because when I started having that, I didn't really have like a good idea of my audience like that. So it was a learning process. I'm glad to go through it. But when it coming back to the audience, so let's say, for example, I have like two prayers up. Oh, the one right here. Two prayers up, long sleeve. Well, not long sleeve. We keep it simple. Short sleeve, color blue. There's people out there that only like black shirts. Yeah. There's only people out there that only like red shirts. Somebody might say, I, I, I got a red shirt on me now. Like, let's say, for example, I'm at the beach. I'm bringing, I have a book bag full of merchandise. And that's another thing, too. Being an artist, you nobody not going to, people going to give you opportunities and because we're talented and we wanted to become someone and we are someone, yeah. but opportunities just don't come by just sitting on your phone. Yeah. And of course you could go viral off of that, but what people felt to understand is the process behind that. You, it may like, for example, a lot of people might like look at me and they think I just create art and I'm staying home and I just upload to social media. I'm cool with that perception. But little do they know that I'm actually out here providing content. I'm talking to people. I'm introducing myself to people. I might be going a little bit off guard, but I feel like these are information. No, nah, you definitely no. Nah, I, I I like listening to what you guys say. Like it's really you know informative, inspiring. Appreciate it, you already know, man. Peace and love, man. Yeah. <laughs> so to bring it back together, so keep in mind what you mentioned earlier was very great. Keep in mind your audience, start small, don't go all out as an artist and the clothing line, you have time to develop as you go. So think about it like this, um, AP art, again, in high school, you have a whole series, start yeah. small. It could be like three artwork at a time. It could be even one artwork at a time. But I'll say my recommendation is probably like two, have two different designs, see which one people go to, which one your top seller, which which one get the most engagement and then go from there. Don't go all out. Please don't go all out. You'll burn yourself at the end. And I, and especially when it comes to money and trying to provide. Yeah. Oh, matter of fact, to provide. I'm, mentioned, I'm glad I mentioned provide. You're trying to, you, you like lose track of who your audience is in the long run. And mm -hmm. that's the, it's very uncomfortable from my experience. So when you make a certain amount, you're like, okay, nine times out of 10, this is gonna be for somebody that never met me before, gonna go for this. Yeah. So when you mention your shoes, you do custom art for people, that's cool. That could be like a custom order. But if this something you gotta think of, it's very broad and it should go to your specific audience. Don't go out your way to, you can sometimes, you know as you go, if somebody want a white shirt and you only supply black, blue and yellow and red, yeah. If you want to make that exception, by all means, go for it, especially if you want that sale. Right. But when you look at it that way and you start laying that path as you go, people might say, I want a gold shirt, and you get them a gold shirt. So when somebody, you bring out a certain shirt to an event, and then they see somebody with the gold shirt, they're like, I want the gold shirt. And then you got to go out your way and make a gold shirt. So that's something to consider. Yeah, like you can't, you can't people please. That's the thing, like. Because people pleasing that gets you in really messed up situations where you know you end up producing stuff that you never in the first place was going to produce, and then like you just burn it through resources and money, and it's just like mm -hmm. you know, you're over the place. Truly, man, I couldn't say it any better, man. Yeah, that, that's that's the gist. That's the gist of it. So, well, um, for my Bromelia series, I took a step back. Um, I went straight to black, and then as you saw, my Valentine edition. I went with this maroon purplish color just to switch it up every now and then. So I'm at my own pace. Um, another thing too, and then we'll um, go into um, a couple of questions because I see a couple right here. Um, okay, cool. Try to think. I just lost my thought. That's crazy. Hold up. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. I'm just, oh, what's up, everybody? Everybody coming through? Yeah, we got some um, new people joining. Yeah, new people joining, you know. Um, great. Another thing, too. Well, you mentioned can't please everybody. Don't be a people pleaser. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know how that goes. Um, 
when I started my clothing line, I started with like X amount of design in like a year or a year, a time frame of a year to two years. In the long run, I had like five different artwork from my series of my color and pencil pieces. Right. But there was a point in time where people see my other artwork, like my consumerism artwork, where you see me with this outlandish hair and you see me grabbing my face expression with a bottle of clear cell. It's like an acne inspired artwork that I made. A lot of people wanted that artwork. They'll look at my portfolio and they'll be like, I want that one in the book. So you got to be brave enough and, and let them know, like, we can be in contact and whenever I drop it, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Just don't make it out the blue because that person wants that specific artwork. And think about it, like, all of these companies, they're, like, looking at the blueprint. I, I go to these stores, too, not to, um, yeah, to be informative and, you know, gain knowledge because they're out there. Like, I yeah. want to have my clothing line that's on the front shelf of Nike, Foot Locker, like, what it takes to go and have your body of work there as well. So everything happened according to time. So everything take time. That's what I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> Truly, man. Bro. Truly. We got a couple of questions. Shout out to everybody. Shout out. <laughs> okay, cool. We got a great question from Jip. How do you pronounce him? Oh, Jafar Pullen. He's another friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How you doing today? All uh, right. <laughs> Would okay. you like to read? No, I'll read it. Um, okay, I know you guys have your own art forms, but who inspired you or influenced you into illustrating or your own way? Um, I'll take this question real quick. Um, go ahead, go ahead. I guess, okay, from a young age, like since I was like in elementary school, I'd always just be drawing. Like I didn't take it seriously at the time. Like I would just be drawing random doodles or whatever in class. You know, if I'm bored in class, I'm drawing it, you know? And then over time, it's just like, I would see like different shows, like say, I used to draw cartoons at first. That's what started it all, like cartoons. I would say, I gotta say, cartoons started it all. <laughs> like, I remember I drew Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause like every time I would see it, I'm like, dang, this is cool. Let me see if I can draw it. And I end up drawing it like almost exactly the way it is. And it's just like, over time, I'll just draw from my imagination based off of like things I see. Like, I would try to draw people I wasn't good at it at first, but you know, when I got to New Orleans, that was like, in a way, a focus of mine. Like, cause like we would draw a lot of people, and um, <laughs> Kay would always draw cartoons too. The same thing. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it started her too. But um, basically, like elementary, I, I'd say like f fourth or fifth grade is when I really took it like dead, dead on serious, like. My um my art teacher from KLC Elementary, she really she really helped me out. Like she pushed me, she got me into um Norland because I remember the application got it was an application mix up and like almost went to like a whole different school. But then mm. she straight up was like, nah, like give us your peoples, give us your parents, you know, fill it out. She took it straight to um our like my old um middle school art teacher and like you know, that's really what, like, cartoons started all, basically. And then, you know, over time, it just evolved into just me doing, like, portraits of people and just doing my own thing, you know? Very interesting, man. I feel the same way, man. I would say, I would say I started off with cartoon as well. But mm -hmm. not only that, I would draw based off of observation at a young age. Yeah. Um, I still have this four-year-old drawing that I made of, uh, the old house that I used to live in up north when I used to live on the north end of like North Miami. So just taking that memory and drawing it based off of observation, it was very impressive. But of course, you know, four year old style. And I still got it to this day, which is I gotta hold on to that. I go be in the museum. Absolutely. For real. So like not only that I drew the structure of the building, but of course it's very flat. Cause you know yeah. by the age it's very flat, two-dimensional, yeah. but you see the gates on the side of it. But you see the house directly in the middle. Um, I added things that wasn't there. For example, I added like a dog in front of the yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. And not only what 
I started drawing at a young age. I used to draw like plants or like little grass, little grass things. Mm -hmm. Just just drawing those little things, but of course, that quality. So that's what started me at a very young age. And I see another part of the um, the question. There's a lot of people that inspired me and influenced me as an individual. What well, you mentioned, I'm so glad you mentioned like your your foundation with the elementary and middle school, those people played a huge role in my life as well. And just being in the art more magnet program and going on art field trips, just always being informed. And you got, got to give a huge shout out to Dade County, the 305, you know, got to give a huge shout out to them. The fact that how we're so diversified and we're around so many cultures, we got Wynwood, we got Art Basel. Yeah. And that's another thing I'd like to add on to. Um, there's a famous artist go by, if I'm, I might pronounce the name wrong, but please correct me if I'm uh, pronouncing the name wrong. Um, Ken Hill, Ken Hilly, Riley. Mm. He's a, he's a, I, if I'm not mistaken, he's a Haitian or I know he's a black artist for sure. We just yeah. put him in that category, but he made these huge paintings, life-size paintings, like very ridiculous with this unique acrylic painting style he got like an aesthetic along with his styles and basically he made paintings of black figures doing iconic gestures that like yeah. a lot of renaissance painting painters have this unique pose she dropped it in the comment session thank you Kayla yeah. when I saw that the year 2013 I believe I was at Dr. Michael Crop Senior High I went on a field trip with the art magnet program and just take a look at a lot of different artwork ceramics and that was a time when it was very alive and i left out of that building like i'm on the right path i can do that and i'm gonna get there and i think i continue working i got the foundation the support system all i have to do is put in the work so those are the people that inspired me and along with my peers like you anthony just speaking to you you inspired me man like you just speaking to each other and i gotta give a huge shout out to all of the other peers that join in art talks like Gabriella, Alexis, I gotta give a huge shout out to them. Just hearing different people from different side of the country, just very inspirational and just in taking living, breathe art. Definitely. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said, yeah, fine, that's so good. <laughs> and is this person, is this person also? Yeah, she was a part of my, she's a part of my art crew, like, um, she was, <laughs> She was in the art magnet with me also, Eleni. Um, like one like one of my best friends, basically, like, you know, tell you like we built we built a whole whole family out of the art program. Like it was like a whole family it was like everybody was cool with everybody, you know, for the most part. It was just you know. Truly. Hey, gotta give you a huge shout out to the art fam. Yeah. <laughs> we got another question from Tia. <laughs> Okay, what does your artwork represent? Does your art represent something about you? Um, and yes, I know her. She very somebody very special, very very special. <laughs> um, but you want to take this question? Okay, cool. Um, can you read the question once again? My bad. Can you read the question? No problem. Um, what does your artwork represent? Does your art represent something about you? Oh, sure. Um, let's see, uh, my most iconic series, um, yes, my art definitely best represent me. I like to create something. If I'm showcasing an artwork and I put it out to public, best believe that it's something about me and I want to give my explanation of how I look at life through perspective. So, for example, like these two artwork, my most iconic series up to date. Um, I use stairs as a simile, uh, transcending to new levels, and I look at life by taking one step at a time. I throw hidden, um, hidden messages towards these specific series, but yeah. in the long run, I do create a artwork based off of color theories. Um, Island vibes, just everything that I experience day to day life, conversations, you know, document your life as an artist. So I make artwork that best represent me. And I want to not only 
give the viewer a pleasing artwork to look at, but I want them to leave inspired. Yeah. So yes. What about you, man? Um, I would say a lot. Okay, my art really, basically, it really represents like basically black culture. You know, like I would like, like I remember I really started focusing on like drawing, painting, and everything. Like black women, that was my main focus. Like because you know, I just I really found black women very uh, interesting. Very um, what's the word? I would say, I, I, let me just use the word amuse, you know, like basically, like with this painting right here, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but with this right here, like I did, I, I incorporated like um, magazines, I did like mixed media, I did magazines and then it's a really, it's like a really big painting, so you won't see a whole thing, but um, basically like I wanted to like do this to like show the different hair types of black women like basically because i know a lot of black women may have um insecurities about their hair like i like i've heard of that um throughout time like i, I would hear like oh some women have insecurities about their hair um <laughs> and basically um i just wanted to like show like show the beauty of the different types of black hair that there is like permed or even like curly afro and you know some women they even cut their hair for different reasons some may want to and i heard even i went on a i saw a video china and mclean made she talked about how some women they their hair can hold a lot of like baggage a whole lot of um like it can hold a lot of like negative things towards it it can just hold a lot and like when they cut it it's like freedom basically you know <clears throat> So, that's deep man yeah like basically, that's why like i really wanted to like it like i really had to think about this for a while like i really was like because the picture i originally saw like my reference photo like i saw it and i was like this is cool but i need to do something to it you know something mm -hmm. to, be done to it so that's where like i got like the whole the women in the hair like them struggling to, like detangle their hair and everything because like you know, sometimes black hair ain't the easiest to detangle or, you know, manage. But, you know, you still got to love it at the end of the day, you know. But, Definitely. Um, yeah. And I just found different um, magazine uh, pictures and stuff to, like, you know, like put together and just show different, you know, different um, types of hair, basically, for black women. But um, that's basically been my main focus is, like, drawing, like, black women and, like, just showing love to the, you know, the beautiful black queens out there and everything. Hey, you know? you gotta give a huge shout out to them. Without them, we wouldn't be um, where we are today. Respect, man. Thank you for sharing that amazing and just the thought of it. And just have you have a viewer of that particular audience like look at it and like got it right away and like I felt this way. Like you, you convey all of my feelings by looking at the painting. Like, yeah. Wow, that's so beautiful. Just the fact that you was able to take it to your own hands. And I know if as an artist, it might be like very, it could be like a lot of pressure. It's like, do I really want to put this out to people to see it? But sometimes you just gotta take it for the team. You just, yeah, you just gotta yeah, just take it for the team. And I'm just glad you were able to have that thought and you put in the work and you, executed it perfectly and thank you for that explanation man thank you my pleasure man hey we, we had an hour man we, we, we man we going going crazy for real um, yeah for sure um do you have any other question for me um not that i can think of at the moment no respect don't worry um, um well, go ahead um no nah, that was a it was a great it was a great um, conversation, man. It was, was just very what? informative. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, definitely wanted to let you know if you have any art-related questions or um, you would like to hear any critique. Um, my line is always available, man. And I know the same for me. And I definitely ask you any art-related question. And we'll continue building and yeah. just continue sharing the knowledge that we have and just continue uplifting each other, man. Definitely. Um, yo, I would love to do this again. Like, this was really dope. 
Hey, for sure, man. Hey, there will be plenty more, man. I, I definitely have that, man. I, hey. hey, I gotta keep it a secret, but 